Hey everybody, welcome back as we talk about Codia and Lua. We're going to look at arrays and tables today. Now, I don't necessarily mean that thing that you learned in math class and then that thing that you sit at uh, dinner and eat. No, not at all. Inside of Lua and other programming languages, you can list things out. There might be a come time where you want to actually list a whole bunch of information, and this is the way we do it. So let's, for example, let's create an array, and we are going to, this is how we um, actually denote it here with our syntax. And the first one, let's write as one, and let's the word one, the string one, and the string two, and the string three, and let's just put the number four in there. All right, so now what we can do is we can come down here and we wanna print what's exactly in the array. This is how we do it. We do array and then we do the square brackets. And then if I put a one in there, it's going to go to the first position. The first position in the array is this one, is one. Second position, two, three, and so forth. So pretty easy, right? The first thing in the list, second thing in the list, third thing in the list, and so forth. So if I want to print the first thing in the array here, let's hit refresh, and it's going to print out one. Whereas if I come down and I put in two and hit refresh, it's gonna print out two. Does that make sense? You're actually putting in the value that is associated with the specific key of two. Whereas if I put in three, boom, puts in three. Whereas if I put in four here, it's gonna spit out the number four as opposed to the other strings and things like I had before. You can even put functions in there like we looked at last time. You can put tables with inside of tables. Pretty crazy, okay? So array is a list. Now, pretty much the same thing happens when we do a table, all right? So now we will create this table. And there is not much different here, except for the fact that I can label the keys here. And let me see if I can explain that pretty well here. So for example, I would like at the table, I would like it to be in the position of one. So this is my first position. And what do I want in the first position? In the first position, I want, oh, I don't know, alpha, the word alpha. So whereas an array, it automatically assumes that the first one is one, we're going to actually just make a key called one and its value is going to be alpha. So if I come in here and I say one, it should in the output give us alpha, okay? So in this table, named table, the one key associates with alpha. So if I print that, it'll print alpha. Let's try and put one in there. Is there an actual reference in there? No, there's not. It's printing out nil here because there isn't an actual reference for that. But if I were to come down here and put in a reference of one and say that that is, mm, let's just put the beginning is one. Now let's print it and see what happens. It's gonna spit out the beginning. The first key here is one second value, or second key is the number one, and alpha associates to one, and the beginning associates with the number one. Okay, I'll put a little diagram here so you can see it a little bit, whereas each time we create something in there, um, you can see the difference. Okay, so we'll put that there so you can kind of understand. I'll put it in more of a spreadsheet because really, honestly, it is. It's just a spreadsheet. It's a way to store information. There's a shorthand way to do this. So instead of putting table with those brackets, we can do table one is alpha and we can do table dot one is the beginning. Whereas we come down here and we're going to print what's in each of those and it should spit out. Oh, it didn't print out. Let's do this, table.1. Oh, I don't think it likes that. It doesn't like that at all. So let's do this, table.2. Because it's seeing that as a decimal, we don't want to do that. We want to make sure it's table.2. So let's print out table.2, and it prints out the beginning. So it's a little bit easier for you in terms of writing. It names it that way. You don't need to put the quotes there. It automatically names it that way. It's a little bit of what's called a shorthand way. Um, it's easier to do that nice shortcut that it has, okay? Uh, you could do several different 
assignments at one point. So for example, if I come here, and instead of doing this on two different lines, let's do this on one line. And we'll come here, and we'll say table, and we will do squigglies, and we will say one equals, and we'll separate it by commas, and we will say two equals, all right, and so notice here, I'm just putting them in at one time. I'm saying here's the table, and the first one, this one, is alpha, two is the beginning. So now when I come down and print table dot two, it prints the beginning. Whereas if I come here and print table dot one, boom, it prints out alpha, okay? There's several other different ways to do that, but this is very handy for you to store a whole bunch of information. Using the, the dot, and using these uh, squiggly brackets, curly brackets, their braces, in order to put the values in there is very, very helpful. Now, if you'd like to actually print out everything that is in there, we can do this little ditty. Let's put another value in here, table.3. And that, what's that gonna be equal? We'll just put the end. Okay, so now for example, let's print it out. Let's print out every single value. So instead of putting print table dot three, print table dot one, print table dot two, we can do what's called pairs. So for example, we can say for key and values in pairs of table, do this. We're going to print key and value and then we're going to end it. So now what it's going to do is going to print out, it's going to come in here. So for every key and every value, it's going to print in this table. It's going to come through and go into the table and it's going to print everything out over here. So if we run it, it should say alpha, the beginning, and then the end. Boom, one alpha, three, the end, and two, the beginning. So notice here, it is not in order and that is interesting. There isn't really any specific order when we're looking at a table. Whereas if we were to do an array, it'd be a little bit different. With an array, with just, an, with just a list, we can create the array here, and let's create it, and we'll put in one comma two comma three comma five comma six comma ten. All right, now what we do is we do for every integer, I'm just gonna do i, value for v in i pairs, and it is in the array called array, we're going to do this. We're gonna hit enter, and we're going to print i and v, and then we are done. So now what it's going to do is gonna print out these three values, and it's gonna print out all the values in this array, and it should be in a specific order. Let's see if it does that, and it is. It is in a specific order. The first spot is one, the second spot is two, third is three, fourth is five, the fifth is six, and the sixth is 10. It is a nice ordered list. So if you want things to be in order, and you're just using one, two, three, four, five, you can do it that way, versus a table, actually is specific. It actually gives you, you know, one spot is this, okay? It, it's good for labeling later on if you have a bunch of information. All right, well, that's pretty much it for tables and arrays. Use these often for filling up your lists of information. You could do specific sprites or images. You could do a list of information. You could have a table item for a specific person. Uh, anything there and print out the different information there using pairs and I pairs. It's very, very helpful for you when you're using a lot of information. So good luck.